when they listen to the prayer in the X-ray room of the forensic medical expertise, after the end of the examination regarding the identification of the relics, the myrrh streaming began, which was followed by a strong divine fragrance. All those present were witnesses of that miraculous event, it is said in the report of the abbot of the Holy Trinity Monastery of Alexander Sversky, Father Lucian, which he gave to Metropolitan Vladimir of St. Petersburg and Ladoga. In the northeastern corner of the Valamsky Archipelago, there is the holy island open to all Ladoga winds. Here, in a cave hollowed out in the rock, 500 years ago, Venerable Alexander of Sver, was engaged in prayerful efforts. The cave is smaller. When you enter it, your back touches the rocks. The oil lamps of weak light that burn in front of the icons, are enough to illuminate the surface of the cell. Venerable Alexander spent several years here. As it was said in the biography, due to the great effort, the skin on his body became so tough, that it was not even afraid of the impact of a stone. The saint was praying in a cave on the holy island when in response to his prayers, the voice of the Holy Mother of God was heard. Alexander. Get out of there and go to the place that was shown to you earlier, you can be saved there. And the light disappeared. Venerable Alexander left the cave and behind the pine trees, which were standing on a steep rock, he saw the calm waters of Ladoga. A great heavenly light shone on that side, where the Sphere flowed. On that day, the Venerable Alexander left Valam and sailed to Sphere. Here he stayed in the same place where he slept ten years ago, on the way to the Valam Monastery. After some time, the saint's prayerful solitude was interrupted by Prince Andrei Zavolition, who had wandered off while hunting. Zavolition questioned the reverend for a long time about how he lived here. I have been living here for seven years, said the saint, and until your arrival I have not seen a single person. I feed on the grass that grows here, and I have not eaten bread. When his solitude was broken, people started arriving here. Monk cells were built on the bank of the holy lake, and the reverend himself lived in the previous hut around which the brother's cemetery was built, called Othnia Desert. Many students of Alexander Sversky themselves became saints and founders of new monasteries. First was Prince Andrei Zavolition, who received the name of Andrian Andrasovsky during the monastic tonsure. Then Gennady, and Nikifor Vazhayozersky as well as Kornli Padonsky. Terapont Voznesiensky and Kazian Solomensky. The entire area between Wanga and Ladoga was consecrated to the monastic families they founded. The power of the prayer of Saint Alexander of Sver, was unusual. Such an event is known. They built a log cabin on the canal between the two lakes, dug the isthmus and the water from the upper holy lake went down. The torrent was so strong that the monastery buildings were in danger and it seemed that nothing could save them, but the reverend invoked the name of Christ, made the sign of the cross over the flow of water and a miracle happened, the flow stopped. The venerable's clairvoyance was so great. Once the pilgrims gave their contributions to the monastery, and among them was Grigory, who arrived from Pidmoser. He extended his hand to place his contribution, but the saint pushed it away. Grigory asked Alexander Sversky, why he did not receive alms. Well, you don't know me, Grigory said. Right, answered the saint, I do not know you and I have not seen your face, but your hand is so defiled that the stench spreads from it. Why are you beating your old mother? Great fear then gripped Grigory, who carefully hid his sin. He asked for advice on how to correct himself. The reverend advised him to seek forgiveness from his mother. Also, the venerable Alexander's modesty was no less wonderful. They say that once, when he was already the abbot of the monastery he founded, the fame of which spread throughout Russia, the monastery's treasurer came to him and said that they were running out of wood, and that a free monk should be sent to the forest. I am free, answered the reverend, took the axe, and went into the forest. During the 23rd year of his stay at the Holy Lake, Alexander Sversky saw three men in white clothes, who were shining with a vague light, during the night prayer. This is what the Lord himself honored the saint with his appearance in the Trinity. Alexander Sversky, recorded in the history of the Russian Church, by Archimandrite Makari, Veritenikov, is a unique Orthodox saint, to whom the Holy Trinity appeared just like to Abraham. It is not certain whether this fact from the life of Venerable Alexander Sversky was known by the people who occupied the power in Russia in 1917, but it is certainly known that they started their satanic communist campaign precisely from the Alexander Sversky Monastery. In the fall of 1918, the Alonet sent a detachment under the command of August Wagner to the monastery. The monks tried to oppose the mocking of the holy relics, but the soldiers did not care. Elements of an evil style, as they called the monks, were arrested, the monastery was looted, and the tomb with the holy relics of Venerable Alexander Sversky was hidden. The preservation of the body of the Venerable Alexander, who ended his earthly journey 400 years ago, 
was so incomprehensible to Wagner that despite the obviousness in his report, he called the relics a wax doll. Not deciding to expose them as it should have been according to the instructions in order to expose the priest's deceptions, the relics were secretly transported to the Lodino Valley with the fulfillment of all secrecy measures, and placed in the hospital chapel with the strictest security. On November 5, 1918, when the monks of the monastery of Alexander Sversky were shot in the courtyard of the Alonietskai prison, the liquidation of the relics was also indicated. And for exactly 80 years, Orthodox Russia lived with the thought that the holy relics of the Russian saint were destroyed by satanic communist power. The Lord, again, did not allow this. By the way, we will mention that the conquest of the monastery of Alexander Sversky, ended very sadly for August Wagner. The desecration of the Venerable's relics and the looting of the monastery, caused a strong protest throughout Russia. Saint Patriarch Tikhon, addressed Sovnarkom with protests. Explanations were requested from Alonitz. The head of the Central Committee replied that he considers all his actions and decrees correct in the sense of merciless struggle with the enemies of communist ideas and socialist thought. This clarification would have completely satisfied the Bolshevik leadership in Moscow, if a very spicy fact had not been revealed during the correspondence. August Wagner, a fighter for communist ideas and socialist thought, proved to be very prone to theft. He took 40 pieces of silver objects from the monastery and gave only 9 to Moscow. The rest of the silver, 31 poods, was allegedly handed over to the poor committee of the freed monastery of Alexander Sversky for distribution among those who needed it. For him to implement this plan, with such an explanation, it is understandable that it did not work. A special investigation was started with all the consequences that followed for Wagner. The history of the search for the holy relics of the Venerable Alexander Sversky, which was started by the nun Leonida with the blessing of Father Lucian, the abbot of the Alexander Sversky Monastery, which was restored in 1997, deserves special attention. The main part of the documents was destroyed and it was necessary to look for the necessary facts from the remains. Our search, says nun Leonida, was based on the belief that the relics of the saint who looked at the Holy Trinity face to face, could not be destroyed by any infernal forces and that they are under the special protection of God. Through archival searches, we were able to clarify that on January 31, 1919, the remains were exported from Lodino Field to St. Petersburg and placed in the Closed Anatomy Museum of the Military Medical Academy. According to the testimonies of the workers, during the years of the revolution, an exhibit appeared in the main museum that remained unrecorded in the scrupulously compiled catalogues. On the basis of anthropological, iconographic and x-ray research, it was concluded that the mysterious exhibit represents a fully preserved mummy of a man, whose age, ethnicity, and external characteristics correspond to the description that was drawn up during the first transfer of the relics of Venerable Alexander Sversky, in 1614. The belonging of the exhibit to the canonized saint was also confirmed by the damage on the right blessing hand. Their character left no doubt that these damages were actually from taking particles of relics. The unusual position of the right leg, the legs lay like those of the recently deceased, the right a little higher and the left a little to the side, also fully corresponded to the description made in 1614. When you look into the earthly life of Russian saints, you can clearly see that they were the best among the people of their time. And by their minds, and by their talents, and by their courage. But all those properties and gifts so respected in the world were insubstantial and insignificant for the saints. The main ones for them were calmness, prayerfulness, obedience to God's will, and service to God. And our church, when it glorifies saints, is guided not by their earthly merits, but by their merits before God. And there are no errors related to political sympathies or antipathies or to the situation at a given moment. The bodies of those pleased with God do not decay, the church finds their holy relics incorruptible. The life of a saint does not end with burial. After death, they continue to participate in earthly history, helping all who turn their hearts to them. A miracle, a great miracle happened in July days in St. Petersburg. 465 years after his repose, the great saint returned to us sinners. And his return is similar to the light that illuminated the evil rays that have gathered over Russia at that time. During that campaign, 63 coffins with holy relics were exported from monasteries and churches. Today, after 80 years, by the grace of God, all of them have been transferred. Doesn't this mean that through the conciliar prayers of the Russian Orthodox Church, God's grace is returning to long-suffering Russia? Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey exploring the miraculous return of St. Alexander Sversky. If you found inspiration in these sacred moments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more enlightening content. Remember to stay connected and may your days be filled with blessings. Until next time, peace and divine grace be with you.